praising the Lord and we are committed to the word of God. I'm Bishop Peter Gatimo. The Lord is with us here. We are reaching out from Apostolic Faith Church, Bahati, Nairobi. Oh, how we love you and appreciate your love for God. You have been with us and we will remain together and we trust and we know according to the word of God and God himself, we will, the Lord who started good work in us, we will continue with it until the day of the Lord. We believe Christ in fullness. We believe Christ in his perfection. We believe Christ in his complete work. That's why we are saying we are here today. And when the rapture comes, we will be together in the air. We will be together also when Christ will share his glory in heaven forever. God bless you so much in just name. That's our prayer. We are here saying Christ is Lord and we will be together for I know we are preaching this word to make all people powerful and winners. Thank you for subscribing to our YouTube. God bless you for being with us in our, the Facebook and YouTube. Apostle God bless you and kindly make others get this message. Now we are now, in part two of the message, arise, rise up again or arise again. Now, last time we had a wonderful message centered on the life of Elijah, especially after the experience of the Mount Carmel, when God answered by fire, and later the life of this mighty prophet was threatened by Jezebel. And you know how God came around as Elijah laid down under the tree in the wilderness saying, God, kill me now. Take me home. And God came through an angel and said, rise up and eat, rise up and drink, for yet there's another wrong journey. And I believe, please don't give up. You better, even if you lie down like Elijah, please don't go to that terminal age. Please, don't, don't leave the terminal head. Just leave a space for that angel because the angel is you at work, releasing another season, another long journey, another, uh, another way, another strength for God's children, another level of ministry. Because after that, Elijah was involved in something else away from Israel. And and God wanted him to proceed, proceed to Mount Horeb. And there God said, I'm giving you orders. Go back and do this. Go back and uh, go back and appoint Elisha to take over your office. Go back and appoint Hazael to take over Syria. Go back and appoint Jehu to take over Israel. Go back. You will not leave your office vacuum. The three offices, the office of Jehu, the office whatever, yes, I would like you, Elijah, as I take you home, you leave people to execute my will, to execute, to make sure whatever you said, whatever I want in Israel is done in a perfect way. And that's what God is going to do for he has spoken. Now, we pursue this message. Today, another thing that you cause us to arise again is not fearing. Now, I'd like us to embark on the book of Jeremiah as God called Jeremiah into the ministry. Now, if you check the book of Jeremiah, the word fear not is mentioned. God called Jeremiah, if you read chapter 1 verse 4, you go through up to verse 12 is just calling, calling, direction, confirmation of call. But if you go uh, to some part here, let's read verse 9. Uh, let's read verse 9, verse 8. You know, verse 7. Verse 7, Eli uh, Jeremiah expressed some impediment. He said, I'm only a youth. But God said to him, do not say I am a youth. One of, the, one of the issues that we have 
that we need to overcome is our status or maybe some uh, inadequacy or maybe some limitations, some physical limitations, mental limitations, or maybe social limitations. People who are caught the ministry sometime, you measure yourself against yourself. You measure God's calling against your performance, against your ability. You measure, like Moses said, I'm not able to speak. I, uh, Jeremiah is saying, I'm only a youth. Gideon said, how can I be, how, how am I a mighty warrior? And I am the least in our family. And our family is the poorest in the tribe of Manasseh. You see, this impediment. And I would like to say this. If you have not been able to perform because of the way you perceive yourself or the way other people perceive you, I would like you to do this. Do not limit God, the creator of our lives and the sustainer of our souls. I want to say this by God's grace. If God says I'm a mighty man, even if I'm disabled, God knows how, how to use me. Because God will never speak to you just to test you. Whenever God appears to us with a voice, it is final. It has been tested. It has been released. It is a dissolution from heaven. It has to be accomplished. It has to be accomplished. And God is never a stranger. If God says to be sure to me, you are a mighty man, I will use you. God is not speaking to me as a stranger. He, it is the creator speaking to creation. It is the owner of life speaking to the life that he owns. It is the proprietor of my soul speaking to me because he owns me. And that's why we are saying, whoever has withdrawn because of your background, whoever has not performed because of the way people perceive you, whoever failed to reach out and to reach on because of the way you maybe you have been in the past, I would like to share you, to say to you, what God said to you is totally independent from your background or maybe from what people say. Can you depend on God who spoke about you? He knows that you are young. He knows that you are not a quick thinker. He knows that among men, you could be the least. But God, when he speaks to you like he spoke to Gideon, that you are a mighty man of war, he means that. God can bring his labor on you against your background. I say God can produce you in his own way. Something that's totally different from what you know from your family background. And therefore, this man said, I'm a youth. God said, don't say so. For you will go. For you will go to all to whom I said you to. And whatever I command you to say, you will speak. You are, you are capable. And, and God said to, uh, you, know what, you know what God is saying to, uh, to Jeremiah? We are not discussing that. We, I didn't come to discuss my decree. It is final. Trust in me. Move forward. You have to say what I have commanded you to say. And you have to say it to the people that I sent you to. That as simple as that. Whatever you call youth, whatever you call being young, whatever you call being uneducated, leave it. Proceed on. Proceed on. And I said to you, whoever you have been stuck because you focus so much on your lack of money, on your lack of wisdom, on your lack of, actually, when you say you lack wisdom, it's not that you lack wisdom. It's, not, it's that that's how you perceive yourself in relation to other people. But God can raise you above them and you be independent from them and dependent on God and you do God's will on people. God having elevated you. And that's what we are saying. God says, don't say I'm a youth, you go. Another thing, after 
Jeremiah said this a youth. God commanded him, do not be afraid of their faces. God had to say this. Because when God says, <clears throat> Jeremiah has a perception that he is going, he is sending him to some elders. Big people, kings. Because God said, you are prophet of a nation. Which means, Jeremiah will handle kings. Jeremiah will handle thrones. Jeremiah will enter into king palaces. Jeremiah will handle governors. Jeremiah will handle mighty people. And yet, he is saying the youth. God had to introduce a second command. Remember, the first one was, don't say you are youth. The second one is, do not be afraid of their faces. God knew Jeremiah would meet faces of people that may appear to be powerful, to be compelling, to be prevailing over him, and maybe just looking at, at people, he will, he, will, he will perceive or he will feel like uh, I'm not worthy to prophesy. He said, when you start, the, start before them, do not be afraid of their faces. Why? It's not because of who you are, Jeremiah, but it's because I will be with you. Number one, to deliver you. Which means the ministry of Jeremiah will involve God intervening in some situations to deliver him. And you cannot be delivered if there are no attacks. You cannot be delivered if there are no threats. You cannot be delivered if there's no danger. Which means, in this ministry, there'll be some dangers. But do not be afraid. Be right there where there is possibility of danger and attack. I will be with you there. You will prophesy. But before they attack you, I will deliver you. That's the, 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 the status of your ministry, Jeremiah. And God said, now, Jeremiah, you are not going to speak your own words. And that's why if you go to verse 9, God says, he put, he put forth his hand and touched my mouth and said, the Lord said to me, behold, I have put my words in your mouth. Why? Jeremiah, for you to be strong, your mouth should produce authority. Your mouth should produce my word. Your mouth. And from today, you may lack words. Let me say this. I've been in the ministry. And sometimes, what makes us prevail is the word that God put in our mouth. You know very well what I'm saying was put in me by Jehovah. You're standing before powers of darkness. You are standing before satanists. You are standing before power of witches. You are standing before critics. You are standing before people who do not even want to see you. But as you speak, the one thing that will give you confidence is because the, my mouth is releasing what that are put in me by Jehovah. I have seen that work so much. There are times I have had those strong forces of darkness. And you feel like you are inadequate as a human being. But you gain strength when you remember. Whatever I am speaking. It was put in my mouth by Jehovah. And I being a prophet of God. A servant of God. It's not a self appointment. It's a calling. That time you get stronger. Yet you attribute your ministry to the almighty Oh my God, unfailing God. That enough make you mighty, although you look, you look insignificant. I said to you, friends, the Lord will raise you power free. And you go to verse 10, the Bible says, I have this day set you. You know, God is so responsible about all aspects of my calling. Remember, number one, he said, I have made you prophet of our nations. It's him. Number two, I have put my words in your mouth. Oh my God. It is, it is his words in my mouth. And number three. Do not be afraid. I will be with you. Ah, it's God who is with me as I face people. 
And number four, the Lord says something. Now, you are not appointing yourself. I have set you. Setting means God raising me and causing me to take the position and the office of my ministry. God raising you and putting you into the office of calling. I want to speak the word of God to you, my sister, my brother. It's God who set you. That position. And you need always to know your qualifications, your credentials are God-given. My preaching is God-given. My office, whichever office of calling and life you are in, is God-given. My speaking, God put his words in my mouth. It's God who appeared to me and said to me, I have made you a prophet of a nation. It's important, men and women of God. We are not self-appointed. It's God who called us. People who are self-appointed will not go far. But people who are appointed of God will always be renewed. You always renew your strength. You always renew your strength. When you remember, it's God who set me. It is he who touched my mouth. It is me, he who said he will be with me. And I should not fear. When you know that, the Holy Ghost raises a standard, even in situations that appeared beyond your strength. Now, God says, I've set you. You know, when God says he has set you, he also gives you like job description. Let me say this, by God's grace. Any man in the ministry and life, there's, there are two or three th things that God spoke to you when he set you, which are clear job description. I'm saying job description from God. Look, you know, when God called Paul, he said, this man you reach out to kings. This man you reach out to Gentiles. And this man you suffer a lot for the gospel. God gave a definition. God gave like job description of Paul's calling. And that's why Paul would write later and say, I, Paul, the apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. Any letter Paul would write, I, Paul, an apostle. I, Paul, an apostle. And Paul would give a testimony. He said, I used to be this way. But on the road to Damascus, God appeared to me and said, I have set you to be. That testimony is very effective and important to God's children. And God says to Jeremiah, now I'm releasing your definition. Whatever I refer to as a prophet in your life, I'm going to give a description. Number one, in verse 10, the, God, the Bible says, I've set you over nations and over kingdoms. The issue that you are local village youth is no longer there. You are not a local priest in Anathoth. You are now set. This is your new office. You are set over nations and over kingdoms to root out and to pull down. This is powerful anointing. Remember Jeremiah was involved in judgment. Isaiah was like an evangelist. He was sent to tell Israel, there's chance for you if you rectify, God can show you mercies. And that's why in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18, God says, come, let us reason together. Jeremiah was not sent to tell people, come and let us reason together. He was sent to tell them, you will be judged because you've hardened your heart. You've worshipped idols. This is the time these people were to be taken to exile uh, by the king of Babylon. You are going to be under Gentiles. Israel was supposed to rule the world. But because of sin, the people that they were supposed to rule over, now things changed. They became slaves under the people that they would have ruled. That's what happened when you sin and rebel against God. You realize that in life, if you rebel against God, instead of being blessed, you become a beggar. Instead of ruling over, taking dominion, you, you, you start before others. Other people go ahead of you and you follow them. If you rebel against God, the God-given position disappears. And you become subject to ridicule, to harassment, 
and to punishment and to misuse of men. And that's what we are saying to young girls in the church, brothers in the church, bishops, remain holy, remain consistent, keep the covenant with God. And I tell you the truth, whenever you go, the position God chose and appointed you for, we will always remain. I'm surprised, surprised when you move to America, when you go all over, you realize you are not, the anointing God has bestowed on us. If you go to Middle East, go to Australia, go to South Africa, you come to Kenya, you realize you are prophet. If you are prophet in America, come to Kenya, the office is still operational. If you cast demons in Tanzania and you go to Nigeria, you still cast out demons. Remain holy. Remain a covenant keeper. And God now will keep you in the position, in the anointing, in the office he set you in. And that's very important. But listen. Please, rise up from your human impediment. Rise up from your human limitations. Rise up from what you perceive yourself to be in relation to strong men around you. For the Lord says, do not be afraid of their faces. I will be with you to deliver you. You will not withdraw. You have to face them. I will be there with you. They will not be so friendly. But you are not withdrawing. You are in the battlefront. You will be there. You are not sending somebody else. You are the one to go. You are not sending God. It's God sending you. You know, some people have changed the way the, 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 the ministry is said. God says, go for me. Some people are saying, God, go for us. I don't know. You can't be blessed. It's like people who do business. You can't have money and if you never be involved in a very real way, tangible way in business. You have to supply and people pay you. You have to work and get a salary. You have to open your shop, do the marketing, and you are paid. You cannot send God to your shop. It's you to go to your shop. You cannot send God to be a driver. It's you to drive that vehicle. You cannot send God to sell your goods. It's you to sell and God bless the work of your hand. Listen, do not withdraw and do not acquire another way of living which is not real. People who are withdrawing, sitting back in their houses, waiting for God in your bedroom, waiting for God, the whole day seated somewhere, not working, not preaching. I've come to this, even some pastors, you are not preaching. You don't expect to see members on Sunday, members that you have never prayed for, people you have not reached out to. I say to you, anything must be, anything you see, any achievement, it is an outcome of real work. It's an outcome of real involvement. It is an outcome of real encounter. That's why God is saying you must be there and look at them on their faces and do not fear them. I will be with you there. Not in a position of withdrawal, in a position of real performance. Be in that crusade. Lay hands on them. I will be with you there. Be in that business. Speak to that customer. God will be with you there. Be on that area where you are researching. You want to put up a business somewhere. Be there. Let God speak to you in that place. See where you can get good market for your goods. Yes, you must also be an expert of what you are selling. It is you that God you use to explain your goods to the customers. It's you. You are the instrument. Do not withdraw from the real life. It's you to be in the real life. And God will be in the real life to make life real. And that's very important. And we need to not withdraw. I know at such a time in this season, there's a lot of withdrawal. Life appears to be mysterious. Life appears to be to have no direction and definition. But listen, God is still at work. 
people are withdrawing from life and from God. I would rather not withdraw from God and ask God, God, produce another season for me. Show me where my money is. You know, I remember one time Jesus, Jesus meant and countered the tax collectors. And there was no money around. And Christ said, no, Peter, go to the, to the sea. And the first fish you get, open the mouth. And the money you get in the mouth of fish, bring it and we pay this man. You know, Jesus did not say there's no money. He is the Lord of Lords. Do not withdraw fast. Let Christ tell you where your money is. There's no way that Jesus will withdraw from your life. Yes, you will withdraw. Jesus has gone ahead of you. That's where you should be. You withdrew from his walk. He is still walking. Run after Jesus. Catch up with him. Catch up with Christ in your church ministry. Catch up with Christ in your business. You stop moving last year. Christ is still moving. Maybe, it's, maybe right now you are having few few coins. Maybe right now, according to Christ, if you can catch up with him, you are, you, you are at the level of thousands. Catch up. And that's why anytime God appears to any man, he says, arise, arise, rise up and go. Rise up. When he appeared to Joshua, he said, Joshua, arise. You are the person to make sure these people close over. By the way, if it's only, if, if God is, if it, you know, Joshua did, not, God, Joshua did not say, God, take these people across. Can you hear how, you know, God said, Joshua, you are the one. To take these people across Jordan and to make sure they inherit. Therefore, rise up, be involved, and God will be with you there to make sure you prevail and you overcome. And therefore, rise up again, friends, after the season of withdrawal. You know, during the COVID, we withdrew so much until we withdrew, well, until we withdrew, withdrew became a norm. Somebody right now is seated, as well as people beyond 40 years or 50 years. They feel they have all the right to stay back in their houses because for the last two years, that has been the norm. We have acquired a withdrawn life. We have acquired life whereby even today, people are, few, are still afraid. Are still afraid. Some businessmen who could have performed very well are in the house and you are feeding on the results of the money. I said to you, friends, God will be with you there and do not fear their faces. He will be with you to deliver you. And God says, do not fear. Your ministry is not simple. You have to root out and pull down, which means we are not building on what has been there we are removing what has been there for God wants to establish his own. Put, root out and put down. Destroy and throw down. This involves even destroying the strongholds of the devil. Can you hear this? We are not building our families on pre-existing order. We are not building our business on pre-existing -pre things. Uh, if it's God to read you, God wants to start a totally new thing. That comes from him. And he will use you. And as you go along. You will not gain. You will not claim any glory. You will say. I used to be a hawker. I used to beg. But through grace of God and favor. When I was out there hawking. An opening came. And now. Whatever I am. And whatever I have. Is totally incompatible with what I used to be. You are a millionaire, but you used to be a hawker. You own a fleet of vehicles, hundreds of vehicles. You own a lot of land, but you used to be a squatter. I tell you, what you used to be and what you are are incompatible. Why? There is a space of favor as you walk with God. Don't worry. There's a space in ahead of you that is in the mind of God. But God wants you to be there for you to express favor. And I said to you, arise again. Do not depend on your past failures or, or physical or intellectual impediment, inadequacy. 
God says, you will say what I have sent you to say. You will be where I have commanded you to be. You will say what I have said you should speak. And you to speak to the right person. I will be with you. I will cause you to pull down and to tear down and destroy. For you are not going to build on what has existed. You are going to bring my kingdom. So that this to come, you will be able to say... Whoever I am and whatever I have is totally a product of God's grace. Arise again. There's a season of performance. It's you to perform. You are capable. You are capable. God raised Gideon who was, who was at the great fear of enemies. But he said you are the one to destroy the enemies. God raised Moses who was withdrawn and could not say I, I can't speak. God said, I don't want to hear that. You will go. God is raising you. You are the Moses of today. You are the Gideon of today. You are the Elijah of today. You have to go. And you have to be there. You will speak. And you are not to fear the, their faces. You could be insignificant. But God will make you significant. You could appear short. And maybe... You know, these days, people, social life is becoming complicated. People will ask you, who, which family do you belong to? Who are you? Don't worry. God is not building your fame and favor on family background. God can raise a generation out of you and he build a name. God said to Abraham, I'll make your name great. I'll, you, I'll make you a blessing. You, you may have come from a poor background, but God can speak to you and say, I'm the one to make your name great. May God bless you and keep you. Father, I pray for, our, for us all that at such a time, we overcome fear and arise again. There are riches from heaven that have come. Something that is beyond our understanding. A product of heavenly counsel or a product of of a resolution of God, a product of the kingdom, finances, prosperity, great big churches that God is producing out from the throne of heaven. Yes, I know this day it is the will of God that is being done on earth just as it is in heaven. Father, cause us to you, to you, for you are going to make, to prove your name in our lives. In Christ we pray and believe. Thank you.